Good morning. I'm going to spend a little bit of time today showing you how to do your own little arrow analysis using Golden Cheetah. First thing, obviously, you're going to have to download Golden Cheetah. Once you have, you need to import your activity. So I'm going to say import from file. Uh, the ride that I want to look at, I did on 1030. It's going to try to import that and ask if it's okay. It'll save it and it'll show up on your activity list, which is over here. So if I highlight that one, I get to see the summary of my data. There's all kinds of information that you can get. Uh, Golden Cheetah does a nice job with a lot of graphs. What I did in this particular ride was I did a section where I, I rode on the hoods, I rode in the arrow bars, and then I rode in the drops. And those are the three things that we'll be looking at today with this analysis. You'll need to, down, uh, to add the arrow lab chung analysis uh, option. And you can do that quite easily. Hit the hamburger over here, add chart, slide down, click the button, and you'll get a chart like this as well. So once you do that, you're going to see a couple things on here. Um, two lines, and they, they're, they're elevation. The green one is actual elevation, and the blue one's kind of a theoretical elevation. And it's based on, on your ride data. And at the end of the day, our goal is to make these two things line up. And when we make those line up, it'll give us an idea of our CDA, which is our uh, coefficient of drag times area. That's kind of our arrow loss, and that's what we're looking for today. In order to do this, there's a few pieces of data that we're going to need. Um, one is total mass of yourself or your rider, all the clothes, bikes, hydration, everything that's on the bike for that ride time. So let's say that, that mine was... 96 kilograms uh, all in. The next thing that we're going to need to know is our air density. And the way we can do that is first, I like to go to Weather Underground. You can go to historic, historical data. You pick your location, uh, the day, and then if you scroll down, it'll show the temperatures, uh, dew points and pressure and you're going to need those things to figure out your air density and the great news is that golden cheetah has a tool um, if you go under tools air density estimator and if you click that you're going to get a pop-up box which i already did over here and we can go through and see at 154 roughly the time we were out there 50 30 50 degrees fahrenheit 30 degree dew point and a 29.19 inch pressure I plug those in, it gives me my air density. I can simply copy and paste that back into my, my air density uh, area. And then I have, now I've got my mass, my air, air density. Uh, I'll cover these other items. The other things we're going to need is our rolling resistance. And in this particular case, um, I can get that information or estimate that information on another site. I like to go to bicycle rolling resistance. Uh, they, they have all kinds of different tires. I was on a cross bike at the time. You can look through this. I, I This isn't the tire I was using, but frankly, it's uh, similar to the tire I was using. I have, it's got a series of tread. It was a, a Maxi Revenger was what I was using. And if you scroll down, it'll give you an idea of your CRR, coefficient of rolling resistance, based on air pressure. Uh, I don't have a lot of pressure in those. I run them pretty low. So I'm just going to grab this value for CRR um, and come back here and paste that in. Now, um, we have the whole ride file here. And I only want the first section to begin with. So what I'm going to do is highlight the first area and this would be when I was on the uh, hoods and again I'm going to highlight to get rid of that little bit of an anomaly at the end and my goal here for this is to line up the beginning and the end of these two charts there's a thing called E offset which basically is looking at the elevation and trying to line those up automatically for you at the front. You can see those, they lined up pretty darn good. 
I could manually slide this back and forth if for some reason they were not lining up well. But I'm going to leave it on auto. Uh, I've got a little bit of an anomaly at the end. and This, this happened at, during the stop and that's not unusual if air pressure changes a little bit. The Garmin can think that your elevations change. So I'm going to get rid of that component so that I've got uh, no oddities at the beginning. Oh, I got a little bit of an oddity at the beginning of this one too. So I'm going to zip that out of there. Easier said than done. It's just being a little bit difficult. All right. So you can see I, I line up at the beginning and now I want to line up the end of these things. I don't want to change my mass and that kind of stuff. The only thing that I'm going to do here and I guess the one the one before I do that, if you wanted to, if you have this particular power meter was reading at the uh, hub, but if you had chain losses in here, you could make this say 0.98, and that would, if your power meter is reading from pedals or from the crank, that would help offset for that. So what I'm going to do is just slide my CDA until those ends line up, and you can see that there. So my first data point is 50. Point five zero zero two. So on the hoods on this particular day, my uh, CDA for that first section was 0 0.5002. Next, if I just right mouse click, I will eventually, and it's all the time, different times I was zooming in, I will eventually get back to my original screen. And again, I'm going to take the second one. Remember, this is when I was on the um, arrow bars. And so I want to get rid of that little bit of an anomaly and get rid of a little bit of this anomaly here. Okay, that time I did a little bit better. You can see that the that E offsets lining up in the front and my mass didn't change. Uh, air pressure didn't change. I could change it if I wanted to, but let's assume it didn't. Uh, my rolling resistance didn't change. Nothing's changed with my tires. So at this point, all I need to do is change my CDA to see what it would look like. And again, what I'm doing is I'm lining up this little portion over here. So remember, on the first, when I was on the hoods, I was 0 0.5002, and this time I'm 0 0.3800. So you can see a pretty drastic difference for me being on the uh, arrow bars. And again, I right click and get out of there, go back to the original file, and now I want to do the last one, which is on the drops. And so, again, I'm comparing how would I look on the drops. I want to get rid of this little bit of anomaly at the beginning. These are lining up. I'm going to slide over. Again, nothing's really changed with my... In this particular case, I think I'm going to line up right here. You can see how those things kind of came together. I had a little bit of coasting at the end, which I'm going to think probably pops that up a little bit. But again, I want to get in the zip code here. You can see that this time my CDA was 0 0.4533. So again, just to reiterate the numbers, what we learned from this was on the hoods, my uh, CDA was about 0 0.5002 on the arrow bars 0 0.3800 and on the drops 0 0.4533 so pretty marked difference between those two you can see the biggest drop is between the arrow bars and the hoods and the next biggest then would be between the drops and the, and the hoods as well but again pretty big difference there with with the arrow bars and it just goes to show you that you can use this tool to analyze different things. You could do different helmets, different clothing, different positions. Uh, it's really up to you. There's just lots and lots of options out there and uh, just gives you an opportunity to, to more analytically compare options.